This is time invariance example number two. Formally prove whether or not each system is time invariant. Let's take a look at a general approach to prove whether or not each of these three systems is time invariant. When a system is time invariant, this also goes by the alternative name shift invariant, which perhaps is a little bit more descriptive of the concept that, that we're trying to test. Let's imagine this. Suppose we have a system T, we apply an input signal X to produce an output signal Y. Now imagine that we take this sequence from the output and shift it by a certain amount, say uh, n naught samples. Now if I take the same system, but now take the input signal x and shift that by n naught samples, then if we observe the output likewise shifted in such a way that these two sequences are identical, then we say the system T is time variant, or equivalently we say it's shift invariant. Here's a proof structure to establish this case for system T. The top track represents the case of shifting the signal after processing. The bottom track represents the case of shifting before processing. If the post-shifted version and the pre-shifted version gives identical results for the output, then we say that the system is time invariant. Let's move on to the detailed solution. This is system T4, which is defined as x of minus n. Here's our proof structure. Let's pass x through the system T, and that gives us x of minus n. We'll then pass that through the shift operation. That means we subtract n naught from the sequence expression. Here we have x of minus n minus n naught. Now let's pass x through the pre-shift, giving us x of n minus n naught as the input to system T. Now the system will operate by changing the sign of the uh, sequence expression, so that would be n minus n naught with a negative sign in front. Let me distribute the negative sign across and we have x of minus n plus n naught. Comparing the two, well, they're not the same due to the difference in sign here. Therefore, Ya is not equal to Yb, and this system T4 is not time invariant. Next, we have system T5. This is n times x of n. Use the same structure as before. Passing x through the system T gives us n times x of n. The shift operator subtracts n naught from each expression involving n. Here we do the pre-shifted version of x. Apply that to the system t. Now n is going to multiply whatever the input happens to be, and the input corresponds to x of n minus n naught. Now let's take a look at the components here. Clearly we, we know they're different. We know the system is not time invariant. But here we recognize that n is what the system does to any input. Here, n minus n naught is the result of this post-shift operation, which also applies to the input sequence x. Here, x of n minus n naught is the result of our pre-shift operation. Again, these are not the same. So we conclude that T5 is not time invariant. Finally, let's take a look at system T6. This sums from k equals 0 to n of the sequence values x. I'm going to clarify the case when n happens to be less than 0. The summation is an empty sum, and its result is 0. There might be other interpretations for the summation, but that's what we're going to use here. All right, as before, we begin with our proof structure. This is what emerges from the system T. Now, applying the shift operation can be tricky to make sure that you get this one correct. This one is actually a little bit easier, I think, if we look at some representative values of n. I'm gonna take some time values that are less than zero, where we have an empty sum, and that gives us a result of zero. 
beginning at time step zero, that's the first case where we have something that we can sum. We say sum from k equals zero to zero would give us simply x of zero. When n is one, we sum from k equals zero to one, giving us x of zero plus x of one. In a similar way, when n is two, we add in one more. Now, when we apply the shift operation, we want to delay this entire sequence by n naught. For this specific picture, my shifted version is going to be based on n naught specifically being equal to two. And that will delay the whole sequence to time value n equals two. Continuing, continuing on the bottom track, we have our shifted input passing through our system. We would do as before, summing from k equals zero to n, and the specific input is x of k minus n naught. The system t is operating on this delayed sequence. So let's take a look at that. Here T6 operates on the shifted sequence. Put down some values for n. And again, this still applies. As long as n is less than zero, we have a result of zero. Now at time step n equals zero, we have x of k is zero, leaving us with x of minus n naught. Here we go from k equals zero to one. All right, as we continue along, n is two. So we add in a third value and so forth. Now again, I'm doing this specifically just to picture it with n naught equals two, but it, it applies really for any value of n naught. Clearly we see that these values are not the same. In fact, the version on the bottom always starts at n equals zero. The version on the top always starts later, depending on our value of n naught. Therefore, we see y is not equal to yb, and t6 is not time invariant. Now, I want to show you an alternative approach based on doing a proof by counterexample. That means if I can find even one specific input for which y a and y b are not the same, then we have demonstrated that it is not time invariant. I'm gonna leverage the fact that we have zero output for n less than zero. So I'm going to choose specifically a delta function that is only one for a value less than zero. That means the system operator doesn't see it and the output on the top track y a is just zero. Now, when this delta function passes through a delay specifically of one, that shifts the impulse to the origin at time step n equals zero. Now the system sees this input, or it sees the non-zero input, and we find that our first value is going to be one at time n equals zero. That's what the underline signifies. And then as I continue to sum values that include this impulse, basically we just see a continuing string of ones. We can summarize that as recognizing it's the same thing as the step function. Therefore, we see that T6 is not time invariant. That takes care of this example.